What's going on my Jack brother, Coach Scott here. In today's video, we're gonna talk about why you should not measure your body fat percentage as a way of tracking your progress when transforming your body and what you should do instead. First off, one of the reasons people do measure the body fat percentage is to make sure that they're gaining mostly muscle and very little fat when they're in a muscle building phase. Another reason is to make sure that they are losing only fat and preserving their muscle mass, not losing any muscle mass during a fat loss phase. Now, a great example to illustrate the point of why this is not a good idea comes from a comment that I received from Simon on a recent video where he mentioned that he's lost two kilograms or about 4.4 pounds during the past three weeks. So that works out to be just under a pound and a half per week. But he mentioned that he's lost a pound of muscle among that 4.4 pounds there. Uh, so he's wondering if he should bump up his calories. I'm like, Dude, like your rate of weight loss is spot on. We're looking, if you wanna preserve your muscle mass, you're looking at losing about 0.5 to 1% of your total body weight. When you're doing that, in addition to weight training, there's a good chance that you're not gonna be losing muscle mass during this process. So I asked him why he thought he was losing muscle, where he was getting this data from, and he mentioned that he was using a Tanita scale, but he also mentioned that his strength has remained the same, which is a great indicator that when you're in a fat loss phase, you're preserving your muscle mass in that process. Here's the thing with Tanita scales. I got a commercial grade Tanita scale myself. I've shared this in previous past videos where um, I could step on this scale and it registers me at a certain body fat percentage. I chug a glass of water, step back on it, and it measures my body fat percentage lower and says I gain muscle mass. The thing with these scales is that it will measure lean body mass and lean body mass is so much more than just your lean muscle tissue. Like you're not, you may lose lean body mass in a fat loss phase, but it's not muscle tissue. Lean body mass is your bones, your organs, organs, the junk in your digestive system, water weight, the glycogen stored in your muscles there. So when you're in a fat loss phase and you're losing a little bit of water weight, you're losing a little bit of muscle glycogen, that's going to register as a loss of lean body weight or fat free mass. But it's not like you're losing muscle tissue. That's the kind of stuff that you, you start bumping up the calories back up to maintenance level, muscle glycogen replenishes, your water weight uh, gets back to normal. That's gonna register, oh, all of a sudden you put on muscle as soon as you got out of a fat loss phase. That's not the case. But it goes even beyond that when it comes to the level of inaccuracies with these body fat scales. Uh, there's been some research that shows that they can be upwards of like 8% off with your body fat percentage, which is pretty freaking significant. Um, but the issue with a lot of these scales are like the one that I have here at home, it's, um, I step on it. So basically it's gonna send the electrical single, signal up one leg, it comes right up around the abdomen and then goes back down. Uh, with the handheld ones, it's gonna go from one arm around your torso around to the other arm. So it basically relies on calculations to, it's guessing that, all right, for me stepping on the scale, if my uh, the body fat that's in my lower body is at a certain body fat percentage, the rest of my body must be pretty darn close as well. If I'm holding the hand thing, if the upper body is this certain body fat percentage, chances are the lower body is this certain percentage. But um, this is, not all of us distribute our body fat exactly the same. So it's just, it's guessing and they can be way off. So if these numbers can be that off, why are we trusting them to gauge our progress? Even like if you're using calipers, like I use calipers initially uh, as, a, as a physique coach, 20, something years ago, and that was my main tool for, for measuring body fat percentage. And you gotta like get the exact same spot, make sure that you're grabbing just the, the right amount, the skin there, um, and pinching the, the, the fat and everything there, not grabbing too little or too much. Like it's, there's an art form to calipers, let alone if you're trying to do it at home with some of the home caliper pinching stuff and you're limited in the sites that you can measure because you can't like get your back in certain areas like that. Like it's just, it's so inaccurate. <laughs> like I don't know why we rely on it as a means of determining if we're progressing in the right way or not. Now here's the big issue. In Simon's case, all indicators are pointing towards him losing fat and preserving muscle mass. He was maintaining his strength, he was feeling great, and he was losing the appropriate amount of weight each week. Yet he was thinking of bumping up his calories because he was worried that he was losing muscle mass. And that would slow down his rate of fat loss, his rate of weight loss, and drag on this cutting phase longer than it needed to be for no reason other than what the Tanita scale was registering. And it's inaccurate. Now let's move on to some other reasons why people measure body fat percentage while going through the transformation process. A great point was brought up by Lil Brend or Lil 
far end. Uh, in a recent comment where he asked, uh, during uh, typical bulking and cutting, is it best to stay between 10% body fat and 15% body fat? Now this has been somewhat of a common practice, uh, a suggestion saying that that range is the sweet spot uh, where you're more likely to build muscle. It's giving you the best opportunity to build muscle and less fat. It's been said that if you get below 10% body fat, um, hormonally, it's not optimal for building muscle and you may be experiencing some neg negative consequences. A lot of people say if you're under 10% body fat, you're gonna be food phobic, you're gonna be cold all the time, you're gonna have low libido, low energy, low strength, um, just a whole laundry list of reasons why you shouldn't be below 10% body fat. And then they say if you get above 15% body fat, uh, your P ratio gets thrown off and the percentage of muscle, the percentage of weight that you're gaining is going to be less muscle and more body fat. So that's been, been kind of, it's not, uh, it's up for debate still in that regards, but it seems like more and more evidence is pointing more towards like you can still be building a ton of muscle at 20% body fat, 25% body fat. But here's the thing, if you step on your home scale or do a caliper test or an in-body scan and it registers 10% body fat and you're like, whoa, I better stop this fat loss phase right now. I don't want to experience any of those negative side effects or anything like that. Yet you look in the mirror and you're like, man, I thought I'd be a whole lot leaner at 10% body fat than I actually am. I really want to be leaner than I am right now, but I don't want to suffer any of those negative consequences. And then you're thinking to yourself, man, I feel strong. I feel great. I feel energetic. I have a huge zest for life. Like, why not keep going until you achieve the visual look and feel that you're going after rather than relying on a body fat scale that has been proven to be notoriously inaccurate. And the opposite is true. Like you may get to 12% body fat and it's you're looking crazy freaking ripped and shredded and you're starting to feel tired. You're starting to feel lower libido. You're starting to lose strength and everything. Like, don't keep going to 10% body fat and pushing through that. Like, stop, hold off. Especially if you're like, man, I've look, I've achieved the look that I want. I'm, I'm feeling, I was looking full and strong and lean, uh, but I've got to keep. I want to get to that 10% body fat because it's this number I'm going after, even though it is like beating you down. <laughs> it's not achieving what you truly want, which is the look and the feel. This ties into a great comment I received from John on a recent video. He has a goal of getting six pack abs. He's assuming he's going to have to get down to 10% body fat to see his six pack. So his goal is 10% body fat. And he asked me if uh, losing two pounds is approximate uh, to the same as losing 1% body fat. And if that's the case, then he's got 10% body fat to lose. So he's trying to guess like how much weight he has to lose. He's trying to plan that timeline out there, but definitely overthinking this process and to putting too much weight in the accuracy of body fat percentage. So my advice was to not worry about those numbers and focus on nailing the process. Aim for that 0.5 to 1% uh, total body weight loss per week and you're going to be freaking golden. It's going to take as long as it takes. And don't worry about hitting a certain body fat percentage. Again, the goal is six pack abs. So you may hit it a lot sooner than you think, or it may take a little longer than you think because you may think I just have to have to get down to a certain weight and then I'm gonna have my six-pack abs and that may not be the case so just take it week by week moment by moment you'll know when you get there so just trust the process execute that don't get hung up on the numbers and if you think about it does body fat percentage actually have any value being even in the sport of bodybuilding it's not like they're being judged by the body fat percentage the judges aren't going up there with calipers or Competitors aren't, before they step on stage, stepping into a DEXA scan to see what their body fat percentage is. No, they're based on their look. It doesn't matter what their body fat percentage is. If their conditioning looks incredible, their muscle fullness looks incredible, their balance, symmetry, proportions, all that is on point. That's what they're being judged on. Not the number, that not what they, the scale weight or the body fat percentage is how they freaking look. And really, that is our goals. It doesn't matter what we weigh. It doesn't matter what our body fat percentage is. Do we look in a way that fills us with confidence and pride? And do we feel a way that fills us with a sense of zest and vitality? Are we able to live our lives to the fullest? What are our blood markers? What is our health like? Are we living optimally? Those are the things that matter way more than the body fat percentage. Even if it was somewhat accurate, <laughs> it still isn't an indicator of what our true goals are. It's how we look. It's not what the scale says. It's not what our body fat percentage is. It's 
how we look naked. Do we look great on the beach? That is what drives us with our goals. And like for me personally, like every, I'm asked frequently in the comment section of my videos, like what body fat percentage do you think you are here? Do you think you are there? Like, I really don't care. Like I hardly ever measure my body fat percentage. Uh, I'll step on it once in a while just for shits and giggles. I did a 3D body scan, I think two years ago. Uh, but it just, it's meaningless to me. What matters most to me is that I look great, I feel great, I'm living my life to the fullest. I feel confident, proud, I'm going through my day with, with zest and vitality. My health markers, my blood markers are all freaking elevated through the roof. Um, I'm on top of my game, living optimally. That is the stuff that matters more to me than what my actual body fat percentage is or what my body weight is. So the take home message for this video is that I really hope we get our priorities straight and get over this obsession with body fat percentage and focus more of our attention on what matters most, like how we look, how we feel. Are we moving through our day with confidence, pride, zest, and vitality? Are we able to live our lives to the fullest, giving the best of ourselves to all that we're doing? Are we having fun with our training? Are we enjoying the foods that we are eating? Are we enjoying the company that we are with? That is what matters most. I would love to hear your opinion on all of that. So please take a moment, drop a comment down below, share your thoughts, share your insights, share your feedback. If you enjoyed today's video, please do me a favor and smash that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. If you want some more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the alert button so you're notified each time I upload a video. And if you know a fellow bro who would benefit from watching today's video, please do me a favor and share it with them. Before you go, don't forget to download your free guide, Jacked After 40. Have yourself an amazing day. Catch you in the next video.